Welcome to the channel and welcome to week two of month three of the Hobby Apocalypse 2022. Um, so uh, this is Monday lunchtime. Um, we're starting with a, a quick sort of uh, review of what we've done so far and what we're looking to achieve this week. Um, so where we are at the moment, um, we're looking at the um, Exorcist. Uh, we've got one side uh, if I say mostly done, there's still quite a lot of detail to go through because that's the sort of kit this is. Um, however, you know, we have managed to get quite a substantial amount of, uh, of uh, the detail on here, at least with some sort of base coats or uh, some form of colour added to them. Um, so we've got the front to do. Um, that will be a bit more lightweight, thankfully, in terms of um, detail. And we've got the other side, which has barely been started. Um, the back, which hasn't been started at all. Uh, and then so the turret um, piece, which has got such an insanely large amount of detail. I'm scared to start it in the first place, let alone um, try and finish it. Um, however, that is going to be my main focus for this week. And if by some miracle um, Emperor Wayne, uh, we actually manage to finish that, um, then the next thing on the assembly line, or the painting queue, should I say, rather than the assembly line, is this squad of five Seraphim. Um, these are just the standard um, Seraphim out of the um, the Combat Patrol box. Um, there's no weapon options particularly for them. Um, so as you can see, the Sister Superior has got a power, um, power sword and plasma pistol. Um, the other four sisters have all just got twin bolt pistols. Um, I am looking to sort of add another five to this squad at some point, just to make it up to a full squad of 10, see where we go from there. Um, however, um, that's, that particular part is not a priority right now. Um, these five will make up um, the remainder of my points allocation for the Hobby Apocalypse for this month. Um, so one week in, we've sort of made quite a lot of progress on the, uh, the Exorcist. Um, and hopefully those won't take more than sort of a week at the end. So potentially I could spend another couple of weeks uh, working on the exercise to make sure it's done properly. Um, alongside that, however, if I do get um, do get to sort of uh, um, move on to other things, um, we've got a Gravis Captain that is underway. Um, but still in fairly early stages. This is a new model, it's a gorgeous model, that one. Um, we've got um, a very old Primaris captain. I, I, you know, I use the term old ironically, given I've been in this hobby 20 odd years and this is um, a model that's probably only five, six years old. Um, however, when the new, when the Indomitus captain came out, um, this uh, this guy uh, who had been operating as my Sabre Company captain until that point got replaced. So I've had to repaint his shoulder pad. I started on that um, last night. Um, that's going to go to Grey. He is going to be, I believe it's 8th Company is Grey. Um, uh, so he's essentially just going to sort of sit in the, the cupboard um, in the the long term or well, sort of the medium term i have i have plans to do part of that company at some point they're sort of narratively speaking from my my own chapter narrative they're a defensive company that uh, um that is currently tasked with guarding the home world so um i yeah i will sort of be looking to do bits of that um at some point um and the only other thing that i've done um uh, which is a new step for me is i finally used a contrast paint um, yesterday and um, this was the result this was flesh tear is red um, and it's just really a tester for um, 
and when I get round to doing the immolator. Um, as you can see, it's sort of come through and um, given a nice, uh, a nice colour on that um, that sprue um, stand. Um, so uh, I'll be certainly using that when we get round to doing the emulator. What I did notice, however, um, is that it actually looks better from the other side of um, the um, the plastic to the one that you put the paint on. Um, so to get a nice sort of shiny surface, what I'm actually, I'm gonna be painting the inside of the emulator um, panel with that rather than the outside. Um, and hopefully that will, uh, will reap rewards um, in terms of how it looks at the end of it. So um, that's it for the intro. Um, hopefully we'll, uh, we'll catch up soon um, with some more progress on The Exorcist. Thanks for now. Bye. So here's the end of the first painting session this week. And I've been working on some silver details. Uh, organ pipes at the back there. Some of this filigree on the front here. Um, I've done the uh, the ironwork around the braziers on this side. Um, done all the rivets. Um, about an hour's work. Oh, one thing: if you have this model, be very, very careful with these railings. They are extremely bendy um, and fragile. Um, I've nearly snapped these off several times already just handling the model while I'm painting it. Um, so later tonight, I'm hoping to finish um, the uh, the organ pipes at the back there, um, and I might just go around and try and do all the silver detail um, on the whole thing. Um, we've got all of this side to do, um, so that will certainly keep me going for um, plenty of time yet. And we will see you in the next video. Welcome to the channel and to this wrap-up segment to the exorcist video um we are in week two of month three of the hobby apocalypse um sorry if i sound a bit confused i've been off work all week with covid um so i've been uh, a bit out of it but essentially bedridden and um, this is what i've done while i've been stuck in bed isolating out the way of the rest of the family um so i have finished the exorcist um, except for one bit which I'm not putting in because I don't like it um, this is supposed to go in the back behind the organist but I don't particularly like it as a part so um, that's staying out um, it's supposed to go in that gap there just behind it um, but I don't think it looks like it loses much without it um, this has taken me the best part of two days um, uh, to uh, to get to this point from where it was, which was already started. Um, so I'm really, really pleased with how this has come out so far. So far? Oh, yeah, well, yeah, it's finished. Really pleased with how this has come out. Um, and, um, yeah, that's uh, very chuffed. Um, can't believe the amount of detail on the model. It's absolutely incredible. Um, so many little bits, so many details, and sort of just when you think you're finished, you look at it again and you think, oh my God, there's you know so much more still to do. Um, and I think I've even sort of taken some uh, artistic shortcuts shall we say in certain places for example these little sculptures in these little cloisters um, I've just done them as pale stone um, so essentially they're sort of just a quick dry brush um, over um, or a couple of dry brushes over a base coat um, so I mean yeah I haven't even painted much of the detail of those um, I've gone for sort of effect on the wings here rather than um, necessarily the uh, the best layering that I've ever done in my life um, but I think overall the effect of the model is still um, a real centerpiece to, or is going to be a real centerpiece to the army um, 
and uh, yeah very pleased um, I've also started off on the second part of um, month three's um, pledge which is the five seraphim um, they're elsewhere at the moment um, not in the room where I am so I'll show you those um, in another video um, what I have also done however um, switch this over onto the turntable is um, I've recently changed jobs and um, my leaving gift from my old job was uh, an Element Games voucher see the affiliate link in the description if you want to uh, buy stuff from Element they, their customer service is absolutely exceptional as is their turnaround uh, speed on orders um, so please use the affiliate link if you uh, if you want to order from them um, it does mean that I get 5% of the value of any order um, in a monthly uh, kickback, which is very nice and helps me um, keep the channel going and keep uh, keep bringing new models um, to the channel. Uh, this is the Castigator. Um, the Soros has Castigator. It's triple heavy bolter and it's modelled with the um, big battle cannon on the front. Um, Another insanely detailed kit, um, not quite as bad as the Exorcist, but um, still right up there. I mean, obviously it uses the same basic chassis. I've not done a build video on this one, I'm sorry. I was uh, just not feeling up to it. So um, I just finished the build off um, myself. Um, we've got the Hunter Killer Missile on the top here. Um, quite often you'll see them mounted back here. Um, which I also did on the Exorcist, but um, I had a little test and the um, the turret sort of potentially would have failed um, where the uh, the launcher was. Um, so I figured mounting it up there on top of the turret didn't spoil the look of the model. Um, and um, actually, yeah, I think it brings something to it. Um, I have also magnetised this kit for the main weapon, which is the only thing that you can swap out. Um, and uh, there we go, twin auto cannons. Um, this is possibly the easiest magnetising job I think I've ever done. Um, basically, build the turret, um, build the two weapons. Um, they come like this. There's normally a couple of pegs. Uh, one on either side of this to hold it in um, but if you snip those pegs off um, push one of the guns into place and then drill through the bottom of the turret into the gun mounting take that one out put the other one in use the same hole to make sure the second hole in the other gun mounting is drilled in the same place and these are just two mil by two mil magnets um, just super glued in place as you can see in there um, not the most sort of the strongest hold I've ever uh, ever done. Um, if you want a really strong hold, then you can put a big bigger magnet in. But by the same rule, you know, um, they're not falling out in sort of standard standard play. Um, I'm not really not sort of not sure which is the best option with the guns. Um, I mean, with the three heavy bolters, all at two damage. The auto cannon makes sense. 4D3 shots at strength 7 and also 2 damage. You know, that's sort of anti heavy infantry. They're both at minus 1 AP. Um, so, I mean, there is a, a synergy there. Um, however, obviously, not the guns don't all have to fire at the same target. So, um, there's also something to be said for bringing the. Um, uh, the castigator, I think it's a castigator battle cannon, um, which is strength nine, flat three damage, um, and I think minus minus two, minus three, um, which is obviously sort of more of a, an anti-vehicle uh, sort of weapon, which is something that okay, the sisters aren't exactly short of melter options, but strength nine, they do have limited access to. Um, and obviously with uh, a lot of vehicles and sort of knights and things being toughness eight, then um, strength nine makes a big, big difference in that respect. The only shame is that you can't use a miracle dice to uh, guarantee six shots um, from the cannon. Um, 
However, um, you know, it could be worse. Um, and I think the battle cannon is probably going to be my uh, weapon of choice. Although I am, now I'm looking at it, uh, I, I do quite like the auto cannon look. Um, uh, it does um, it does appeal uh, in that form. So who knows? We'll wait and see. But I'll definitely be painting both options up so that I can use them and test them out in a the game. Um, so that's me for now. Um, and um, I will hopefully do another update over the weekend when I will bring to you, uh, ideally, uh, some very much closer to being finished Seraphim. So that's all for now. So um, I thought as I sort of somehow um, missed a load of the um, Exorcist painting on the last video, I'd um, give you a little bit of a bonus uh, this time round um, and show you how I actually go about painting the sort of the final um, final highlights and the yellow of the uh, the armour on the sisters here. Um, it's probably not going to show up massively well um, on camera because of how bright the yellow is in the first place. Um, but um, so far, these have been done with... Overland Sunset as a base layer, then oversprayed using the airbrush with Aerial Yellow, and then Flash Gets Yellow. So that is sort of um, essentially the the sprays are sort of gradually uh, trying to pick up the um, the uh, higher parts of the uh, the armor, um, and then once all that yellow is on. We just do a little pin wash, which means basically painting right into the crevices um, using Fuego and Orange. Um, um, <clears throat> excuse me. That's what gives us the um, sort of the, the darker um, orange, ironically, colour in the uh, the, uh, sort of the the recesses of the armour there. Um, so what we're now going to do is just put the final top highlight on um just show you how sort of light and where to where to put it um and we're going to be using dawn yellow for this now this is a really really pale yellow um it's practically sort of a creamy white um color certainly it doesn't show up properly on the uh, the camera as it is at the moment and to do this, I am just using a standard medium layer brush from Citadel. Uh, mainly because I haven't got any better ones at the moment. Mm -hmm. I would probably be using um, a number one uh, Rosemary & Co, but I haven't ordered any recently. And um, the ones suffered a bit uh, recently, and just from sheer volume of stuff. Um, so, I've got some of the Dawn Yellow on my wet palette. Um, mine is watered down slightly when I put them into the dropper bottles with a uh, flow improver from Vallejo. Um, so, it is slightly thinned already. Um, and then just onto um, the wet palette. Um, so, we'll get a little bit on the brush. Not too much. Um, if you can just see if the camera will focus, uh, it's probably not going to focus on those bristles, but yeah, I mean, you can see that there's not very much on there at all. I'll just get rid of that stray hair that was showing up. Um, it's amazing what shows up on the camera that you don't necessarily see by the naked eye straight away. There we go, that's gone now. And so, what we're going to do um, if I can get my positioning right with the model so that you can actually see what I am doing uh, I'm just going to take this and um, some very, very light um, streaks um, or sort of application of colour just on this half of the leg um, now, because we've got this on my wet palette, um, as this dries, this will blend in uh, a little bit um, with um, with the rest of the yellow. Um, 
So if when you're putting it on, it looks quite stark, don't worry too much because that will fade as it dries. Um, and what you will end up with is um, a more blended um, sort of highlight than initially looks to be the case. And as you can see, hopefully, all I'm doing here, literally, is um, just sort of applying a blob of colour. And I'm using the fact that this is a very pale colour and that um, that sort of blending uh, as it dries uh, feature um, to make the most of this highlight layer here. Um, what we'll end up with is something that just seems to, it almost just loses the yellow colour um, uh, when, uh, when it's sort of fully dry. Um, uh, because the yellow is so pale and it's got so much white in it already, um, it really does um, sort of dry very subtly um, on the model. Um, so I'm just going to try and avoid putting my arm in all oh, that paint on the palette. Um, and the other thing that I'm focusing on here as I'm applying this um, is to try and keep the light source coming from the same position. Um, so essentially you've probably heard this sort of hundreds of times in hundreds of painting videos but um, obviously where the light bounces off the armour um, that's where you get the palest um, sort of colours or the, the brightest colours in some respects but in this instance, that what brightest means will be um, sort of the the palest of the yellow, um, the sort of the lightest colour. Um, and so, what I'm doing is I'm sort of keeping in my mind's eye that that light source is coming from to this direction, um, so sort of above and to the model's left, um, so to the right as you look at it as I'm painting here. Um, and all I'm doing, again, is just trying to sort of apply that, uh, that paint in such a way that that catches um, the edge. Um, and we'll just sort of enhance the idea that the light is is bouncing off the armour from that direction. I'm just doing a little double edge highlight here. Um, so I've done a bit of a broader patch on the top of the thigh um, to try and sort of suggest that that is sort of the sunlight hitting it direct um, and sort of spreading over the armour. But then here the, the armour actually has a lip. Um, and so I'm just putting in a quick thin edge underneath it um, almost as if the uh, the light is sort of spilling off um, the edge of the armour there and I'll just run a, a fine edge highlight down the edge of the leg armour here uh, do something same and then take the, the light again on the edge of the knee guard there um, so again same thing, same sort of principle. We'll just pick up the edge highlight on the shoulder pad. Uh, we'll do a broader one just on this um, uh, piece of armour there that sort of encases the, the tubing around the top. Um, turning it round, the helmet is sort of, sort of a classic spot for uh, this type of highlighting. Um, and what we're just going to do is just sort of follow around the um, the raised sort of area there and then pick up this flare at the bottom. Um, we're not going to make these join all the way up. Um, and I'm just going to keep going over it until I've got sort of a nice pale 
centre uh, with a more faded uh, sort of edge. Um, then we will just run some basic edge highlights um, around the armour here. Um, these are gonna, I'm doing these a little bit chunkier um, just for effect. Um, if you want to, you can come back and then um, sort of run these finer with a pure white um, just to get that edge done. Um, this brush really hasn't got the fine point needed for doing some of the finer um, highlights. Um, I'm uh, desperately in need of renewing my brushes, but um, as ever, um, fine lines have stretched in all kinds of unpleasant directions at the moment. Um, um, but again, as I'm doing these highlights here, I'm just trying to keep in my brain where that light is coming from. And so again, looking to sort of um, pick up and highlight those areas that are going to be naturally brighter. Um, it uh, it almost doesn't matter if sort of the, the highlight, or it doesn't matter if the highlights aren't even um, when you're doing something in this sort of style. Um, because what you're actually looking to do is enhance sort of where the light hits um, the um, you're looking to sort of almost um, just enhance the natural um, point that light would hit the armour you're not sort of going for that heavy metal um, uh, pristine sort of finish where every edge is highlighted and shiny um, uh, and it's important not to neglect the back of the model as well um, because of the way this this light is sort of coming from this direction in you are going to get some light spill um, around the back of the model um, and so there we go that's um, that's one done um, just with as I say some uh, some pale um lightening of the armor i wouldn't even say it's necessarily sort of a, a highlight or an edge highlight in the traditional sense of the uh the term it's it's really just sort of lightening the armor um where the sun is is glancing off it um so there you go um i'll uh, hopefully have these finished this week and uh we'll see where the hobby apocalypse takes us after that